Hello Virgo, welcome to your weekly tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of February 12 through 18. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. This is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to go beyond the details that I'm providing. Okay. Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And here we have a Ten of Swords. Let's put that into some context, all right? You'll have to excuse my head cold today. We're all kind of under the weather lately. Let's do our Dove and Serpent spread, and we're going to do our mystery card, our bonus card, confirmation card, and we're going to put that right here. We're not going to look at it until the very end of the reading, so stick around. And hopefully that will, you know, um, just connect everything at the end and, and give us the confirmation that we're looking for. Okay. So we've got some air, air, water, water, fire, major, pretty balanced. We got some major, air, major, air. Over here is pretty interesting. This is a lot of air and the major arcana. So I'm, I'm excited to kind of get over to the path of the serpent. But we're going to start where we start, and that is with the ten of swords, okay? Uh, you're the type of person I think is really pretty able to cut through the BS. Um, don't know how else to put it. This is kind of like, this is almost an example of your Virgo nature, right? This is really a strong power of analysis. Uh, but this might be kind of taking things a little bit too far where it's almost as if you're you're searching for what's wrong in a situation and you keep searching and searching and searching until you find it. So I feel like this is kind of some some over analyzing or some overthinking or not even that so much, but it's like you're investigating things to the point where you're you're going to create something to find. You know what I mean? This is like an endless search that eventually you have to find something, even if you have to create it. So this is almost as if you like convince yourself that there's a problem even when there's not, you know? Um, and I think, you know, this is part of your, like I said, this is part of your Virgo nature. This is a really excellent quality of analysis, of thought, of breaking things down, of seeing things for what they are, of investigating, of, you know, attention to those details. But this has gone so far to the point now that it's just kind of unreasonable, you know? And I think that this is just something to watch out for because I think, I think you may have a tendency to take it too far. You don't always take it that far, though. You know what I mean? We see a lot of good air energy on the path of the serpent, so it's not like it's not like this is just you and this is how you think and this is, you know, making a mess of your life. No. I think this week, though, there's this tendency to take things a little bit too far. And this is like, again, you're, you're looking so hard, so deeply for a problem that you're guaranteed to find it, even if you have to kind of create it. Okay. But this energy has always helped you out in the past. This has always like helped you to prevent uh, disaster. This has helped you to um, protect yourself. This is a self-preservation kind of tactic. It's a defense mechanism too. You know, it's um, you have this this very wonderful power and skill and ability to to see through everything, to really be able to look deep into a situation or a person. And speaking of people, we don't have any court cards here. So I'm not able to pinpoint one particular person. Although I am I am kind of getting a Z name. I'm getting the, a Z sound. It could just be my congested um, sinuses, but I'm getting a bit of a Z name here or a Z sound in some some situation that you're in right now. And I think that's the situation where we are um, we're doing this kind of investigation where we're really digging deep into something to try to figure out exactly what's going on. And it kind of feels to me, like I said, um, that if you, if the facts aren't readily discoverable, if it's not something that you can find instantly, or even with this intense kind of search, I feel like you're kind of going to create the, you're, you're going to create the result that you're looking for. And even if that is, um, you know, quite negative, it, it's, it almost feels like you in some way want to be right at any cost here. You know what I mean? 
And that the Ten of Swords is interesting because it's the air energy and, and it's a really good quality of air energy. But when we get down to the Ten, it becomes a little too much and it's a little bit too forced. Um, and it is related, you know, let, let me just show you this. This card is ruled by the Sun in Gemini, okay? And we have this Lover's card on the path of the Serpent, which rules the sign of Gemini. Okay, so these two cards are related here. Yes, I'm talking to Virgo. I'm not saying that you're a Gemini. There might be a Gemini person in your life, and they're, they have that Z sound in their name, I think. Um, and there's something going on there where you're really like, you're really like investigating everything. You're looking so deeply into that situation or that person or that relationship that you want to be right almost at all costs. Okay? And here, crossing your path, we have a nine of wands. This is tremendous strength. I think it's going to take um, tremendous willpower on your part to pull back from this ten of swords. Um, I think that this is... This is something like... I don't know, it might have to do with, with uh, childhood or something, right? Because we see some stuff in the past with this justice or adjustment card. And this maybe is not the recent past. Maybe this is also talking about way, way, way back, you know? Not that we're super old, but, you know, childhood kind of thing. Um, maybe not that far, but it seems to me like there was something in the past that has created this kind of sore spot for you, created this a little bit of an issue here with regards to discovering this, discovering what's wrong with a situation or with a, per a person or a relationship. In this case, maybe this Gemini person. Um, I feel like this is a, something that you need to overcome. It's going to take some tremendous willpower and strength to really get through this challenge. Um, it's kind of a strange energy. But here, we have the Justice or Adjustment card. This is in the recent past. But I feel like it's going further back. Um, it could be both, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it. Because um, I'm getting recent past. I'm getting distant past as well. This could be a marriage. This could be some kind of a, a partnership, domestic partnership. Some kind of a, a more of a, a legal like marriage, right? That something had gone on where there was some deception, some untruth, some falsehood, lies, some kind of maybe infidelity. Uh, somebody wronged somebody in that relationship in the past, maybe distant past, maybe your you know, parental figures or something. Something happened between them that, you know, one person seems like they were completely deceived, like these scales were just so out of balance. Right? So it could be some infidelity. It could be some just a really complex web of like lies and deception. And I think it was when you were young, when you were a child or young adulthood, maybe your parents went through something like that in their marriage or something to that effect. And I think that's kind of influencing the situation now that you have with this Gemini person. And I think a lot of these old feelings, the kind of the memories that you had from this past event are kind of affecting things now, right? Where you just uh, kind of on an unconscious level, it's like you're not going to let that happen again. Now, the recent past component of this is that maybe you are in a committed relationship with this Gemini person, this Z name. There's a Z somewhere in this reading, in this situation. And... I'm thinking now that this is a, a committed relationship that you have with that Gemini person and it seems like you are digging for dirt, that you really are trying to find what's wrong with that situation because unconsciously you're kind of remembering what happened to your parents. You're, you're in a similar situation now and you don't want history to repeat itself. You don't want to be that in that same position, you know, that uh, you know, mom or dad or whatever was in, where the scales were so unbalanced and there was um, so much of that deception going on. The infidelity or, you know, there was, 
There was no trust there for good reason because there was something going on. So now you're feeling that mistrust now and you're thinking something must be going on. Okay. And I feel like that is really um, bringing out a lot of these emotions in you. And see with the Knight of Wands, it's connecting the head and the heart, the sun and the moon. I feel like you're going through a period of time right now where a lot of unconscious contents are coming up. A lot of these memories, a lot of these emotions from probably from childhood because you're kind of now maybe the same age as when that it happened to, you know, your parents or something like that, right? You're in a similar situation. Or I shouldn't say it's a similar situation, but you are in a, a committed relationship with this Gemini person. And so you feel like it might be the same situation. Emotionally, maybe it feels like history is kind of repeating itself. Okay, so I think there's a lot of unconscious stuff coming up this week. And I think, um, I think that it's getting a little bit difficult to, uh, to deal with that because we have this 10, we've got this 10 of swords. So I feel like it's kind of manifesting as just this search for that red flag, the search for that information that's going to prove you right, that this is, that something's going on, you know? And I don't know, maybe there is something going on. I have, I have no way to know. But I feel like you're, you're kind of wrestling with it. It's going to be something that um, you understand that maybe this is just from the past, that this is something coming up, the emotions are coming to the surface again. So you know that it may not be, it may not be extraordinarily rational, completely rational, but it's how you feel and it's how your feelings are manifesting as this, of this search, this hunt for what's wrong in this relationship. Okay, so I think there's a lot of willpower involved here. You really, you're, you're a very strong person. I think you have, you've been through a lot in your life. You have tremendous willpower, tremendous strength. And this is something that I think you are, you are contending with. Okay, and I think with the two of swords up here at the top, you kind of know that you need to kind of dial it back a little bit that you may be um, searching for something that's not really there, or you may be creating something that, that isn't really there to begin with. So with the two, this is, you know, this is your attempt, kind of your, your hope, maybe even your wish, your, your, your struggle to kind of put a stop to this and dial it back a little bit. Okay, the two of swords. Kind of want to just take a breath and... Uh, relax a little bit, you know? And I think you're someone with a very intense uh, uh, self-awareness, you know? I think that you can kind of see this going on and you're just like, I need to cut this out. This is not, this is not helping anything. It's not getting me anywhere. But as far as what this relationship is like, let's take a look at that because maybe if we can read some of the relationship energy, we can... Um, maybe circumvent some of this air that we see on the path of the dove. Yeah, it feels, I mean, the main problem, I think, is that Ten of Swords, but we've got the Two of Swords up here, and this is pretty, this is pretty good. This is like your conscious attempt to just chill, you know, to just stop the, um, kind of stop the extreme um, investigation, right? It feels like you're just, you're just keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper until you find something. Um, Beneath the surface, we've got a four of cups. I think that when things are going smoothly for you, that's when you start to worry. You know, this ship is sailing along quite nicely. Nothing crazy going on. It's just kind of level, calm seas. Um, there are no storms. Your boat's in good shape. It's not sinking. Nothing crazy going on. So it's just, it's pretty smooth, pretty level and even. And that's when you're just kind of like waiting for the storm to happen, right? Waiting for the other shoe to drop. There must be something going on because things are too calm. It's like that. It's like what they used to call earthquake weather out in California. It's just really, it's just too calm, too still. It's something must be coming, right? And I kind of get that vibe right now. It's just a little too quiet. It's a little too still. So something must be on its way. Right? And that's that Ten of Swords talking. That's the Ten of Swords talking. 
What I see in the immediate future, though, is six of cups. This is a real harmony, a real, real ease in this relationship. I think that there's really nothing going on. I think you have an intense harmony with this person. Again, I think it's the Gemini person. Um, I want to point out that this may not be a romantic situation. I know we're kind of using the, the romantic, the kind of love relation metaphor here, but this could just as easily apply to a work relationship, a family relationship, um, a friendship, even a platonic relationship, you know. But there's this betrayal in the past between, I think, someone when you were a child. It feels like parents to me. It feels like it's a romantic thing, but it maybe not. Maybe not. We don't see any other water cards here except for this this four and the six here. So it may not be romantic. Okay, I just want to point that out because in case it's resonating in a different way for you, that's perfectly fine. And I think that, that works just as well here as the romantic scenario that we're kind of painting. Okay. But I feel like other than this ten of swords, this relationship is really smooth, really easy. This... This Four of Cups, it's not just kind of idling and waiting for a storm. It's not the calm before the storm. It's not the uh, earthquake weather. It's really just a really smooth sailing vessel. It's just, it's a nice day. It's a nice day. It's an easy journey. It's a fun time. Um, so just by looking at that card, it feels like, it feels like it's a lot a lot more optimistic, a lot happier, a lot more easy, easygoing, smooth, flowing, just really, like, it's just a really nice day, like I said. And, and I don't think that there's really any problem here other than the problem that we're looking for with that Ten of Swords, okay? So that's the immediate future. Really, I think it's, things are good, you know? There's really, there's nothing going on that, um, is so threatening as this Ten of Swords kind of makes it feel like. Okay. Now we're moving over to the path of the serpent, and I just want to say that these cards are always correct, okay? We never we never look at an incorrect tarot card. They're always right. It just depends on the interpretation, and sometimes as the messenger, I can't always understand the meaning or relevance of each card to your particular circumstances. And that's why I ask you to connect directly with the images and with the energies and use your own intuition to go beyond the details that I'm providing, okay? You may have to interpret them in your own way related to your own situation, okay? General energy, this wonderful ace of swords, you are someone that loves the truth. You are someone that loves, um, you love, you love fairness and honesty. You love justice. You love, um, you kind of love being right. But uh, more than that, we said that already with that Ten of Swords, but you love the truth, even if it hurts, even if it's harsh. You would rather um, be hurt with the truth than hurt with a lie, right? And I think that's kind of the, the basis for a lot of this. And I think that goes back to the early, early childhood, early adulthood um, with that justice or adjustment card. Now, the Justice or Adjustment card is holding that central sword of truth, okay? But it's pointed downwards, because in this past situation, there was no truth. Truth was not there. Honesty was not there. Trust was misplaced, okay? In whatever situation that was, I may be wrong about the parents, but there was, there was some mistrust, some trust really just gone, absent. Some truth and honesty that just was not there. And maybe there was never any justice. There was never any restoration of that balance. It was never made right. Okay. And so that leads you now, in your current position, to have this, this real love for truth, this need for justice and fairness and for the balance to be restored. And I think this is what we should be focusing on right now, especially as we move into the path of the serpent. And this is kind of like what, what energies are to come. This is kind of the current situation here. This is what's next, right? This is what's going to be kind of your, your, your task for the week. Okay. First is to come back to this sense of justice, fairness, truth, and honesty. And this is the honesty that, Hey, if there's nothing threatening about this relationship, if there's nothing to worry about, 
there's really nothing going on. You have to accept that truth. You keep digging, you go from this ace, this search for truth, and you go to this ten of swords. The swords are broken, and that central sword is destroyed. That truth, that justice, that trust and honesty that you're looking for, is gone. Right? This central sword, right there in the middle of that card, I don't know if you can see it, but it's broken. Are you doing anything now that is going to break your trust with this person? Are you doing something that's going to disrupt the ease and harmony and the resonance, the love and the affection that I feel in this relationship now? It feels almost as if your continued search, you keep digging, and that central sword, that trust, that truth, it's going to break. Okay, so we need to come back to this and remember this. And now we already talked about the environment. We talked about this lover's card and the possibly that Z name. I'm still getting that Z. Maybe it's just a buzzing in my ears. I don't know. But I think it's a Gemini person. Um, and it feels to me like there's really going to be a choice for you. The lover's card is usually about choice. Not so much about a oh, relationship. It's about choice. And the two of swords here is about a choice. What are you going to choose? Um, because everything that's going on right now is a decision. Right? It's a decision that you're making. We saw some major arcana in the past with the adjustment card. We see some major arcana card in the future, but that's kind of like the projected possible outcome later. But as far as everything in between, the, the way back past to the kind of distant future, everything in between, your choice. Everything here, the water, the air, your choice. This little bit of fire, and this is, this is the good fire. I think this is the fire that we need to really kind of latch onto as well. Hold on to this fire, this nine of, of wands. But everything is a choice. And um, I think you've got to choose love. You've got to choose faith and trust, right? I know you have the instinct to analyze and break things down and get to the bottom of everything. You really keep digging. You know, really keep digging. But some, uh, there has to come a point where we make the choice to stop digging, to come back to the, the trust and the hope and the, uh, the truth. And if that truth, if your digging leads you here to the Six of Cups, then you need to accept that. You need to make the choice to just be in love, to be in this relationship, to have this, um, this ease, this harmony, and this resonance with this Six of Cups. Okay? And again, this doesn't have to be romantic, could be platonic, professional, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Love is love, right? So I think it's very important for you to, to recognize uh, that every moment is a choice for you. And you're either, you're either choosing um, love and truth and wholeness and um, partnership and, you know, union. Or you're choosing uh, to kind of indulge these, this tendency, this emotional, whatever we want to call it over here on the path of the dove. Okay. The next card that we see is the uh, six of swords here. So more air energy. But the air energy that we have is not, I mean, we've got that 10, that's pretty bad, I guess. But we don't have the 7 or the 8. We don't even have the 5. It's like we just go from the ace to the 10. It's just like all or nothing. It's just like one extreme to the other. You know, the 6 here, though, 6 is balance. 6 is harmony. The 6 is right in between. It's the center of the tree of life. It is what everything else kind of revolves around. And so this really is uh, an expression of this truth. But this is that truth kind of in action, on display. This is that truth that is now manifested in such a balanced and beautiful way. And we have the Six of Cups, too. So maybe that the real truth of the matter is things are good. You can enjoy this. You can trust in this person, this relationship, it feels that way to me. But the six is also saying, yeah, you have to still have your, your keen insight, your intellect, your investigative kind of nature, that Virgo nature. 
I said at the very beginning that was, was like your best quality, that disability that you have. But we can't let it get to the extreme. We got to dial it back a little bit. You know, let's dial it back to a six. Let's keep it balanced. You know, do your due diligence. You know, be responsible. Don't be ignorant and ignore, you know, facts as they as they present themselves. Don't ignore feelings as they arise in you. But don't take them to the extreme like that Ten of Swords. Keep them balanced. And maybe assess how you feel and assess how you think, what you're thinking. And see if there is some overlap or see if there's a real disharmony between how you feel and how you're thinking. Okay? So we have to listen to both, I think. But we don't want to give either of them, head or heart, all of the decision-making power, right? We need to keep that uh, more here, more with spirit even, really, than, than with mind or intellect. Certainly not with ego or with emotion. Um, I put these in the wrong place. The next card that we see, final card, the tower energy. This is some real uh, explosive energy, okay? Now, this could be an explosion into all this love and joy and beauty and harmony we got with this six, right? It could be this six, once you accept it, oh, it's going to be a really good time, okay? It's going to be, it's going to feel really good. It's going to be like a free, it's almost like you're escaping from this intellectual kind of prison that you've created with all of this air energy. You're really breaking through this into something tremendous, right? I wonder if, if this... Uh, mystery card is going to be like the Sun card or something. Maybe the Eon card even. Something like that. But this is also could go the other way. That if you just keep going with this air energy, this Ten of Swords energy, you're going to ruin this very, what, what it feels like to me, a very good thing that you've got. You know, you're going to ruin this harmony. You're really going to bring this tower down. And this tower is, you know, the harmonious and resonant six of cups. It's really like... It's, it's threatening the whole thing, okay? So this card isn't predicting the future. This card is saying the, the outcome of all of this energy is going to go one of two ways, really. Either a breakthrough, a freeing of yourself, and emerging into this kind of wonderful feeling, this wonderful relationship, or you're going to bring the whole thing down, you know? And maybe it needs to be brought down. Maybe. There's no saying, I don't, the cards aren't going to say whether or not this person deserves your love or your trust. But it feels like to me that there's a lot of love between the two of you. There's no indication that anything really sinister is going on. So the choices are yours, like I said, between the beginning and the end. It's all about your choices. Okay. And I think listening, balancing, head and heart. Let's see what this mystery card is. I'm kind of curious what this is going to be in this situation. Well, we see a, a, a Prince of Wands here. This is kind of about this impulsive energy that you might have. It's like, it's like I wonder if um, there's going to come a moment where you're going to make a decision. You know what I mean? Like you're not, it's not just going to be something that just kind of gradually happens. It's like at, at some moment you're just going to say, okay, that's enough. This is this is that line, this is that point, and we're going to move beyond it, right? So it's like, um, it's like a final decision. It's like a, a resolve. It's like a, you make a promise to yourself or you just like, you kind of, uh, you declare to yourself, to the universe, that you're going to set out on this particular path, whichever way, whatever decision you kind of go with this, you know? It's like a real... A real solid and like definite decision and like I said it's not just a gradual flowing into one path or the other this is like okay I'm starting right now you know this is uh, this is some energy that has thought it out it's got that air component with the Prince definitely reflects all of the air that we have here all of the thinking that's gone into this relationship and then uh, a swift action Right? You've made the decision mentally, you need to act on it. And don't don't like roll the decision back, don't change your mind. I mean you can change your mind, but 
Uh, it's about putting your resolve into action and putting, you know, this this nine of wands into action, that resolve, that willpower that you have. When you make a decision, you stick to it, but you have to also walk the talk. And I think that's the important part here is it's not enough to just understand and make the decision. We have to put it into practice, right? We have to actually do the work and move the energy around. And you can't just, can't just commit to it, you know, intellectually or spiritually or whatever, or emotionally. We have to then do the work to, to move the energy in that direction that we've decided on. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're going to do an extended. If you want to stick around, click on the link that's right there, and you can have access to all of the extended readings all right, by becoming a member to the channel. This was your weekly tarot reading for February 12 through 18 on Dove and Serpent Tarot.